Okay. What's up? This is live demo. Uh, this is a project that I started. Um, so you see, I'm running in a web browser. Um, and what I'm going to do is first thing, reload this. Yay. And then I'm going to demo this. This is uh, live. This actually is designed to work, uh, if you're familiar with uh, Daydream, it's actually designed to work with Daydream. I'm going to go to uh, full screen, hopefully. Actually, I'll do it here. Enter view, enter full screen. There, that's prettier. So what you're looking at is a WebGL application. Uh, what, you're, what you think you're looking at isn't quite what it is, though. First of all, I'm going to start uh, building any kind of application in a system like this requires a framework that allows you to manipulate the data. Uh, what, you're really, what I was really after here is kind of going after the vision that Muriel Cooper had years and years ago. She was one of the founders of the MIT Media Lab, and she had this idea of information landscape, which is basically imagine uh, basic uh, a world of data in front of you that you could interact with, control, and manipulate. And in a sense, that's what this is intended to be. Uh, the first thing that you see here is uh, obviously a, a little window that you can manipulate. Not, not that big of a deal. Uh, it, it's actually running in 3D, so I can actually spin it around. And for some reason, it's not tracking, but that's OK. I'll deal with that. But you can see this is actually a true uh, text editor inside here, so I can actually type this is a real text editor. That's kind of boring, but it's important. Every, by the way, I think every 3D graphics app should have its own, um, should have a, uh, uh, a teapot in it, because it's sort of, uh, sort of standard. Um, up here, we have a little globe. I'll spin this. By the way, I, I had this designed. I, I built this so you could actually use it with red green glasses. But since it's videoed, I thought that might be a little extreme. Um, I'm going to walk up to this, and this is where it gets kind of interesting. What you're looking at is a spreadsheet that's 1,000 cells, 1,000 rows up and down, and hundreds of cells left and right. Uh, what you see in front of you is, um, like I said, I don't know why this is not tracking, but uh, what you see in front of you is literally all those cells. I can look up and down. And uh, in front of us is our number of controls, uh, a little slider. This is actually a color. Picker. This is actually where you enter uh, data. Uh, this is um, uh, a, uh, oops, I don't want to do that yet. Uh, this, this will do some charting, and I'll show you that in a second. But what I'm going to do here is uh, I can select data. And notice when I do that, the controls move out of my way. Now, this is, a design, is literally designed to be used in a, a VR headset, in this case, uh, a sort of a daydream device. Uh, but when you do this, when you select this data, one of the things you can do, since it, it, it's such a big, big data set, uh, is uh, sort of split it out into smaller pieces. So literally what I did there is I grabbed that data, and now I can manipulate it itself or um, get rid of it. Uh, or um, for that matter, I can actually chart that data. So I'm actually going to pull it out as a 3D data set, and I can uh, fly around it. And you can actually see that sticking out. You can actually uh, not just grab that as a that selection, but I can grab the entire uh, column all the way up, all the way down, or the entire set of rows. So I can just select that. You can see that, and that's also kind of fun. Uh, now, this data gives you it gives you a, sort of a sense of what you, what you can do with it. Notice the nice shadows. Um, over here to the side is another data set that's similar. So like I said, I'm really interested in very, very large scale data. So this guy, I'm going to open this up. And what you see is nothing. But what's cool about this is I can extrude it. So what I'm pulling out is literally a uh, two megabyte data set. And you can see it, it's kind of cool how it breathes. I showed this to my wife. She said, don't show that. It's boring. I thought that was really cool, so I keep doing it. Um, but uh, once, once you've got that, once you have that 3D data set extruded like that, uh, you can uh, add a little bit more. You can let's just put a little height, uh, a little color into it. This is uh, literally the kind of the, the sea level. And of course, I can move sea level up and down when I have something like this. And you notice that Florida 
is disappearing. Goodbye. Uh, it, it, not that that would ever happen, but it's kind of cool uh, to see actually how low, le low level uh, areas of the country are. And if there were some kind of catastrophic event, who would get affected first? Like Boston's actually pretty bad. Um, so here's a, another data set. I'm going to walk over to here again. And this time, this, I, I can't tell you how really big this is. To give you an idea, typically on, a, on your screen, you'd have about uh, 40, maybe 60 cells up and down. Uh, and, uh, and maybe about uh, 20 cells left to right. Uh, like I said, this is, a, th this is literally something like 400 screens side by side, up and down. So it, it, it's uh, about 400 times bigger than the screen you typically have. So what I'm going to do here, I'm actually going to turn off, let me just back up a little bit and turn that off, is graph this data in a different kind of plot. This is, uh, the data you were looking at is kind of a Perlin noise data set. Thanks, Ken, if you're still there. Uh, and what I'm doing is literally chart plotting that data as it goes by. Uh, you can literally compute that. It's a lot faster than I thought it was going. Uh, uh, the the uh, resolution of the display is much, much lower than what I typically work with. But you got a sense of it. I, I find that really, really pretty. Uh, but also very powerful, because one of the things that happens when you have this kind of a large scale data set is you have to start thinking about your data not as, oh, here it's right, right here, but it's so much data that you have to start thinking in terms of like a Google Maps approach. You have to start doing a search in this data set and then manipulating it accordingly. So that's what's really exciting to me about this is being able to manage, create, and uh, control this kind of information and use it as, uh, as the enterprises get more and more complex, uh, the requirements go up much, much greater. One of the things, the last thing I want to show you here is uh, this. This is the exact same application running on my phone. No changes. Uh, and um, I find that particularly exciting with this idea of having something that is pretty interesting, pretty powerful, being able to manipulate this kind of information, being able to interact with it, being able to control it. And I, I left out one part. Uh, this system is designed to be collaborative ground up. Uh, I, I built a system earlier called Croquet that was a multi-user uh, 3D application. Uh, I see this sort of thing as uh, you know, the management team of an organization gets together. They look at the hot spots of the organization, find out what's going on, what's important, what's not important. And they can use that to make decisions and modify the structure of the organization, change direction as appropriate. Uh, it's a, yeah, and the fact that we can have this kind of information, this density of data, uh, running quite nicely in a website, in a web browser, is pretty exciting to me. So that's it. Thanks a lot. <laughs>